Hello, I'm Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers. I'm talking about this book, Mental Health, The New Law by Jordans. It's by uh, Professor Phil Fennell. It's a big book. It's been written recently, recently, to take into account the changes that have occurred in the mental health legislation, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. But I'm actually very pleased that this book is available. Jordans have come up in this new law series with some excellent titles. This particular one I've reviewed in a number of different journals and on the internet. And I've said, Fennell sets mental health law straight. And that's exactly what he does. What uh, Professor Phil Fennell is trying to do here is to produce just the right book for the sort of courses that I run looking actually at the various levels of, of issue within mental health. It's a difficult area of law for many people. It's not what, one that many have that much understanding of. So it needs to be treated with a high degree of caution and sensitivity. Because obviously the powers which are available, um, and Fennell just demonstrates these extremely well, and explains them admirably, in my view, too, with that sure touch. Um, they're areas which are obviously controversial to a certain extent. The structure of the work is detailed, but we need it because there haven't been that many uh, publications until very recently about this area of law. Since I reviewed the book, a whole new stream of books have come out, but this was one of the earlier ones after the Mental Health Act of 2007. What we've got here, and Fennell states the aim quite clearly, is to explain the new framework of mental health legislation in a way which is both accessible, not only to professionals, but also to service users, carers and interested lay readers. And he does it in the best possible way with the tools he has at his disposal. Obviously, one has to consider very carefully the various legislative um, areas that have been covered. What we're talking about here, though, is specifically the Mental Health Act 2007, which, of course, is referred to in the preface. Although, of course, the difficulty is we've got the two pieces of legislation running in tandem. Um, the new legislation is substantially reviewed in all of the main 12 chapters but the point that's being made and it's not just in this book but in other books too is that there's no plan at the moment to produce some form of consolidated act linking both the old mental health act of 1983 with the new act of 2007 and its earlier mental capacity act Obviously, there are some very useful appendices in the book, and in particular, uh, the provisions of Bournewood uh, authorizations for the deprivation of liberty under the new schedules of the Act are well covered. Obviously, we're looking at the moment to, to see the implementation of much of this legislation, which started certainly in 2008, coming online in 2009. And there will be further implementations, of course, by April 2010. The statutes are covered well, I think, the two main ones, the Mental Health Act and the Mental Capacity Act. And, of course, at the time this was written, we didn't have the codes of practice, which again are now appearing. Its effect, frankly, as a book, is to explain some of the problems of the confusing mess that we've got, but there are many redeeming features which Professor Fennell brings out in the best way he can. As I've indicated, the chapters are structured in, in a way to make it reasonably easy to understand, if, if that's at all possible, because there's a lot of cross-referring to different provisions of different statutes. But what we've got is Chapter 1 looking at the background and the Bournewood Gap problems, Chapter 2 looking at the overview of the Mental Health Act 2007, and then going through the various chapters, um, going getting f finally to Chapter 9, which looks at discharge and review of 
the lawfulness of detention by tribunals and courts, something again which I'm interested in. I do teach um, one of the mental health courses and this is the book I decided would be the best one for the various mental health courses I run for uh, the Distance Learning Partnership. Certainly what Phil Fennell has done here is he, he does his best with the subject matter and he gets full marks in my view for explaining the mess which our legislators have actually created. He writes in the book, he says of the Act, this current one, it marks the intersection between the health system and the criminal justice system. And that's what it does, and he tries to explain it as well as he can. But he does point out, of course, that there's potential for a broadening of the scope of compulsory powers, which sits, frankly, very uneasily with current concepts of human rights. So you see there is that balancing act all the time. What he's done is he set mental health legislation as straight as he can, which is what I said in the, the title of my review. Um, I welcome it therefore as the best, and when I wrote the review as the only uh, most up-to-date current statement that we have. We've now got a few other publications emerging, but the area which is this delicate area of community responsibilities for those with mental illnesses, is something we have to be aware of. This is clearly an authoritative work, and obviously we, as I've indicated, are not going to have any consolidation. So Fennel has come up with the best that we can probably hope for at the moment. So thank you very much, Professor Fennel and Jordans, for producing this. I know my students will find it extremely helpful. Thank you very much.